<laughs> okay. That timing was unbelievable. Junior! I don't know what he's barking at. Let's see what's outside. I don't see anything. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not starting the video again. All right. Um, <laughs> video 39, factoring quadratics. Okay, so here is where we start to get into some serious things. Um, factoring a quadratic is the opposite of foiling. Foiling, we're taking two separate things and multiplying them together. And <laughs> to get, wow, this is going to be, I should probably start this video again. Hey, bud, what are you barking at? Stop. You stop. Okay, go away. Um, foiling is putting things together. Factoring is pulling them apart. Okay, now this is a quadratic function. Um, and it's clear, you can see, because it, it has an x squared. And it's got a bunch of other things. Put it into, the, into Desmos and you'll see it's a quadratic. It opens up to the top. I'm trying to find the factors, or the zeros, or where the function crosses the x-axis, um, or the solutions. They all mean the same thing. I'm trying to find where the function crosses the x-axis, period, end of story. It's just there's a lot of different ways I can say that. Solutions, zeros, factors, answer, stuff like that. Solving, quadratics, okay. We're going to have a lot of practice with this because it's, this is called the inspection method. Inspection. Inspection. Inspector gadget. Okay. Stay with me for this. The coefficients, and there's a constant. So this coefficient, which is one right now, because there's nothing in front of it, is A, okay? This coefficient, which is negative one, is B, and this constant is C, okay? That's always gonna be the case, always, for a quadratic function. So what I'm trying to do with the inspection method is this. <clears throat> I want to take the C term, and I want to find two factors of C that we'll add together or subtract to get B. I know. So, negative 6, or just let's just take 6. I want to find factors of 6, two factors of 6, that could add or subtract to make whatever this, const, whatever this coefficient is, which is negative 1. So let's take 6. Okay, so I know 1 and 6 are factors. 1 times 6 is 6. And the other two factors are 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is what I want. Because 3 minus 2 is 1. Or 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm looking at here. That's exactly what I need. I am going to set up my two parentheses. Because remember from FOIL, there's two sets of parentheses that we had to add together or multiply together. The first terms of this factored out solution are going to be x and x because x times x is x squared. That's always going to be the case when the coefficient here is 1. So I'm plugging these two in here to x and x. Now, I know I need a 3 and I know I need a 2. It doesn't matter where it goes, just put 3 and 2 here. Now the tricky part or the trickier part is I need to make sure that adding or subtracting makes sense here. Okay, so I have to get a negative 6 but I also have to have a negative 1. So I know that one of these has to be a plus and one of these has to be a minus, okay? Because this is a negative one here, I need these terms to be plus or minus. So, let's say I did this. Negative three times two is negative six, so we're, we're good there. But I have to get these to add up to be negative one. So negative three and two, when I add them, it will be negative one. So that's the inspection method. There's going to be a lot of guess and check here. So don't worry if you didn't get it the first time. We're going to do plenty of these. Trust me, we're going to spend a couple days on this. Now, I'm going to foil this out to make sure I get exactly what's up here. x squared, remember first terms, uh, plus 2x, minus 3x, minus 6. Remember the two terms in the middle add together. So this is x squared minus x minus 6. It's exactly what I got up top. So I know that this is correct. Now, if you're using Desmos, which you should be always, forever and ever, um, you need to see that these are actually factors or zeros or solutions of this quadratic. So I'm gonna set them equal to zero. So x minus three equals zero, and x plus two equals zero, okay? So, because this is always equal to zero. The only number that I can put here to make this true is three. So x is gonna be three. And the only number I can make go here to make this a true statement is negative 2. So x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. If you're using Desmos, you know that's exactly where this function is going to cross the x-axis, at negative 2 and at 3. This is what I'm looking for for factoring a quadratic with the inspection method. 
There are other methods. Uh, this is kind of like systems of equations, how you have three ways to solve a system. You know, uh, graphing, substitution, and elimination. This is going to be inspection, something else, and something else. Okay. I like this method because um, it's kind of like a puzzle. It, you get to kind of figure out what goes into where. But it's obviously going to get a lot harder. So let's go ahead and just do one more. And then we'll see. You're going to have many of them on the fever uh, for tonight. But we'll, we'll take it step by step. We're going to spend some time on it. Uh, I would say we spend all week on it. Probably. Um, but we'll see. Because it is kind of boring. Okay. <laughs> but it's awesome. Because it's math. All right. Uh, let's go with... Uh, all right. Um... m squared plus 11m, I'm trying to find an easy one that isn't too bad, plus 24 equals 0. Okay, remember, I am looking for factors of the last term that could add or subtract to get 11. So if you want to work it out, some factors of 24. Well, 1 times 24 won't work because 24 minus 1 or plus 1 is nowhere near 11. Um, let's go with uh, 4 and 6 because 4 times 6 is 24. Well, four, 6 and 4 is 10 if I add them, and if I subtract them, it's 2 or negative 2. So that won't give me 11 either. So both of those don't work. 12 and 2. Well, 12 plus 2 is 14, and 12 minus 2 is 10. Again, I'm not getting 11 with any of these. The last factor, last terms that I can use is 3 times 8. 3 times 8 is 24, and 3 plus 8 is 11. Bam! We know we're done there. We know exactly what we got. M and M. Always set it up like that to start, okay? Because m times m is m squared again. I know I need a 3, and I know I need an 8. It doesn't matter what order they're in, because they're going to multiply together anyway. Now, this one's a little easier, because they're both positives here, plus and plus. The only way I can get 24 by multiplying these two numbers is plusing them together, or adding them together. Uh, or having positives, I'm sorry. This is going to be my final answer. Let's just go ahead and check it out. I'm going to foil these out. So m squared plus 3m uh, plus 8m <laughs> plus 24. I lost my mind for a second. When I add these two together, I get m squared plus 11m plus 24 equals 0. Remember, these equal 0. That's exactly what I got the first time, so I know I'm good. Now, I'm looking for the factors, because these are factors, but they're not complete yet, because I need to know the actual number value of where the function, this function, crosses the x-axis. So m plus 3 equals 0, and m plus 8 equals 0. The only two numbers that'll work for m, because there are two different values, remember, because the function goes like this. Okay. Uh, is negative 3 and negative 8. So negative 3 and negative 8 are my two x values, or solutions, or intercepts, or answers, or whatever. Done. Whew. All right. Eight minute video. Almost. Ooh, ah, you thought I was going to press it. Um, we're going to do this again for a couple of days. So inspection method.